now, what will it be when we see all of the intricate outworkings of God's grace throughout eternity? We're glad that we can meet here to worship Him. Just a little while ago, while we were getting ready to come to church, the uh, folks around my house were talking about Brother Ray. That's a common subject around our place and uh, has been for a long time. And Miss Lucy was talking about the time, uh, that she, wonderful time she used to have together when Brother Ray had come to their home there in the revival meetings. And he's been in their home in every revival meeting they've ever been in, uh, in, in rather, every church he's ever been in. But now that Brother Conrad's out in the revival meetings himself, not that pastor of a church, they miss that very much, but she said that's not always been that way. She was reminding me of the first time she ever heard of Brother Ray it was when I was pastoring out in Athens, Texas, Virginia Hill Baptist Church, and she didn't get a good impression because some of the folks there at Virginia Hill didn't like Brother Ray very much. In fact, they uh, sort of hoped I wouldn't have him back again. The uh, chairman of the deacons was just saying that he's, he's ruining our church. He's destroying uh, Virginia Hill Baptist Church and warned him away. And she came down and heard and wondered what a man like that would, would do and what uh, kind of influence he had. But she's too, too come to learn to love him and appreciate him through the years. And he carries such influence over our lives of our family. No matter whether we're in South Africa or Australia or where we are, uh, they do not close the prayer until somebody's prayed or nearly everyone has prayed for Brother Ray. So thank God for the caliber of the man that we have among us tonight and we look forward to having him come and preach and my, how our souls have been stirred. I hope that if you have not just plugged in yet, you'll let God do in your life what he wants to do this night and Brother Ray comes to bring to us the message from the Lord. I'm reading in Genesis tonight, third chapter. Now the serpent was more subtle than the, the beast of the field. The Lord God had made he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. The woman said unto the serpent, May he eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the tree of the, the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, and your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, was pleasant to the eyes, the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Eyes of them both were open, and knew that they were naked. They sewed big leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves in the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? He said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked. I hid myself. He said, Who told thee that I was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree which were I commanded thee, that thou shouldest not eat? The man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, he gave me the tree, and I did eat. The Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? The woman said, The serpent will allow me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed of ever all the cattle, of every beast of the field. On thy belly shall thy go, Thus shall thou eat all the days of thy life. 
I will put him between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I pray to multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception is sorrow, and thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And the Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the bee. The sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. Nineteen verses, if correctly read, out of the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Try to get some lost people here tomorrow evening for the service and let's pray and work towards getting lost people saved before this meeting is closed. May we pray. Father tonight, we don't want to pause to thank you. For the open book to buy. For a country that we can open it and read it and believe it and practice it unmolested and unhindered. Thank thee for America tonight. I pray for the leaders of this nation that you'll give them wisdom and help them to. I don't want to have wisdom, but have manhood enough to follow the leadership of thy spirit in doing what's best for civilization in America. Thank you for our churches that's kept America free. Thank you for the young men of three generations who gave their lives that we might be free tonight. Thank you for their loved ones who were willing to give them. God bless each one of them. May we never be so cowardly and cheap to let sin and lawlessness and wickedness and other things take over and destroy what they give their lives to preserve. We pray every Father tonight to bless the homes that are represented here. Pray that they'll all be Christian homes. God, that you'll be head of every house. And everybody in that household will be saved. Pray for this church, every member of it, for this pastor, for the leadership of it. For those who play their instruments, those who lead the singing, thank you for him and their faithfulness in the job they do the music. Because a meeting would be less life and less praise if it wasn't for them. So we praise our name for them. Oh God, how we pray tonight that you just see the ones that's lost and revive those of us that are saved. Help us, O oh God, tonight to rightly divide the word of truth and get out of what we need. And we'll praise thee for it. In Jesus' name, amen. First evening, I talked to you about praying that the eyes of the young might be open, that we might see the importance of 
that which was for us is greater than that which is against us. And they who are for us is greater than they who are against us. Because it looked like the tide had changed. But it will never change when the trumpet sounds we find the victory in the voices of those who are for us. In the voices of the children of God. In the voices of those who have not been conquered by the world or by sin. And then that God had created us and brought us on the scene to bring about victory for his kingdom. And that it worked thus far. And there's no doubt that what it worked the rest of the way. And we are to be a part of those who participate in it. Rather than to give ourselves over to dissipation and wreckage and disgrace of sin and Satan. Tonight I want us to think <clears throat> about four questions that God raised us. First one, Adam, where art thou? Where art thou? That's a good question. God created Adam and put him in the garden. Said, let us make man in our own image. As I said in the beginning of this series of messages, God was lonely. God didn't have any fellowship, anything that we feared that he could fellowship with. So let us make man in our likeness. So God would have something for he and the Holy Spirit and his Son to fellowship with. And God and the Son and the Holy Ghost fellowship with that which he created in his own image. Who could sense and appreciate the things that God had done. Who could glorify God. Who could communicate with God. And so we find in the cool of the evening, God came to the garden. He built a beautiful garden. And let that be the place for man to live. And God came and visited him after in the late evening. He had on a conversation. Fellowship him. Companionship him. And God had a great time. God had a lovely time. Did you know that always the best time you can ever have is with God? God will show you a better time, a more pleasant time, a more complete time, a more satisfying time. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. By the eleven. I want you to know tonight that for complete satisfaction of the human mechanism, the human being, the human desires, is righteousness. You can think of everything else that it is in creation, and it'll never satisfy. But righteousness, God so strung us up. God so tuned us that you'll never be in perfect harmony and perfect tune with God and perfect tune for enjoying yourself until you're in tune with God. Amen. And so as a result, God and Adam had some great fellowship, some great communications together, some great visits together. And you know, Adam didn't have a thing to worry about. He didn't have anything to worry about. He didn't have to worry about clothes. 
He had to worry about styles and fashions. He didn't have to worry about houses and taxes. He didn't worry, have to worry about what he's going to eat, what he's going to wear, where he's going to stay. God had created a garden for him to stay in. He didn't have any pride to bother him. It's just perfect satisfaction. Perfect rest. Perfect happiness. Nothing to torment him. Nothing to... Let you, today we find ourselves worried with a whole lot of things. Whether we're dressed right and whether we're going to be dressed right for the vacation. Our pride eats us up sometimes, and what are we going to have enough to live off of? What are we going to pay in taxes? And how are we going to stand with society? All that stuff worries us half of the time you ever see. You know, Adam didn't have to worry about all of that. God had so created him that he didn't have to worry about it. Wasn't that a wonderful life to live? Yeah. Amen. That's a wonderful thing, just to think about, just live. No worry, no torture, no torment, no aggravation, no dread of tomorrow, no dread of sickness, no dread of death, no dread of going broke, no dread of getting hurt by your brother. Yeah. Did last night. Yeah. No dread, yeah. no fear. Fear thou not, I'm with thee, I'll uphold thee, I'll take care of thee. You just come down here and talk to me every day. Everything will be all right. Woo. What a time they was having together. But he's having such a good time. And they said, well, I'm having a good time. The most powerful creature of the spiritual world, not created in the image of God by any means, but Lucifer <coughs> said, I'll make that up. I'll be his God. I'll rise up over God and put an end to all of this. He tried it and God threw him out and made hell for him to go to. <coughs> Immediately, he was jealous of man. Man was having too good a time and he lit into it and mess, mess up things with man and God. And he's an old sneak, old liar, his father of all lies, is a liar, he's a murder. And the old sneak got down. He went to the woman, and God had said to Adam, you can eat of all the fruit of every tree there is, except just don't eat of the fruit of this one tree in the midst of the garden, and don't touch it. Just don't bother that one. Every bit's yours, but don't touch that. Why? He had to make a choice. See, God's a God of choice. Yeah. And to be like God, we have to be creatures of choice. Amen. And if he said, just eat everything, man wouldn't have made him choice. He would not you know, been, been like God. So God had to reserve something. So man had to make a choice to be like God. Jesus decided himself what he'd die for us. God decided himself that he'd send Jesus to life for us. Holy Spirit did it and made his own decision about these things. And man to be like God. And so God told the man. Now he didn't tell a woman she couldn't eat her did she die. He told Adam all that before a woman's ever created. Just keep that in mind. And the devil snooped around and found it out. And he knew that woman could eat the fruit and it wouldn't hurt her temporarily. Notice I said temporarily. He didn't go to Adam. Now he listened to the devil. He said, eat some of this fruit. He said, oh, oh. God said, we die. Now you listen to that. As God said you die, he didn't say you die. That's that. It's good for you. 
Come on, lead some of it. God just don't want to eat it because it makes you as wise as God and powerful as God. And he's keeping it in the dark. Come on, eat a little. See, the eyes are not open and you'll see as he sees. He didn't say you'd die. He didn't tell you that. Come on, eat. She ate it. She didn't die temporarily now. And as Jesus said, see, it didn't hurt you. Now give some of it. Give some of it to your husband. She said, Adam, eat some of this tree. Oh, we'll die. I didn't die. I'm <coughs> taking your flesh of your flesh, born of your man. God took the put your skin and took me out of you and didn't kill me. He won't kill you. <laughs> and so he took some of the fruit and immediately went into exactly what God said come to pass. And the old boy took off. Hmm. He heard God coming through the garden. He didn't have on any clothes. They run out and tried to make some clothes and put on man's had to clothe ever since. Evolutionists can't answer that, but every creature is born with his clothes on except the man, but he isn't. He got to make him some, or get somebody else to make him some, because he's always naked when he gets here. Announcing that he's sin. And he got to have some covering. God is not going to let no human being ever be born with any clothes on. His nakedness announcing his sin and he needs a covering. All the animals and all the birds and all the everything else and the evolutionists can't explain it, but God's Word explains it. Amen. And so as a result, as soon as they did, they found out that it's naked. They've lost their cold. They've lost their life. They've lost their happiness. They've lost their health. They've lost everything else. And when they hear God a coming, they run and hide in the bushes. So some little fig leaves together and tried to cover up their nakedness. But they knew God's going to see through them fig leaves. And not that here. <coughs> God came in the garden. Adam! 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 I'm here to walk with you and talk with you. It's time for us to get together out here. Adam! Right now! Took his head up through the bushes and said, Here I am. God said, what are you doing out there? I'm naked. My head in the bushes so you wouldn't see me. Who told you you was naked? The woman thou gave us me, he gave me, she gave me some of that fruit. And I ate it. And I realized I was naked. God looked at her and said, wait a minute. The servant. He gave me some of that fruit. He got me to eat that fruit, rather. And he's to blame. God turned around and cursed the servant, cursed the woman, cursed the man. None of them didn't get out of the curse. But here it is. So as a result, my friends, where are thou? Hid. Why? Sin. Rebel against God. Transgress God's law. Wouldn't listen to God. You know why a lot of people ain't in church tonight? They sin against God. And they're running from God. They're hiding from God. When I have a church member lay out for several weeks, I go to them and I say, What in the world you been doing lately? What are you up to? What kind of sin you been in? Who told you I've been seeing your absence in church? And they can't deny it. Anybody that's full of God's going to go to church. Yeah. But when they get into the, the Spirit of God and get back to it, they're going to go to church. They feel naked. And all that packs it up 
to excuse myself. Don't cover up with the neck of this faith of God. They run out and try to hide in the going to the mountains and going to the lakes and going to the bushes and going to the nightclubs and going to the to drinking and going to doping and going to pool holes and going to ball games and going everywhere else trying to hide from God. Where art thou? Yes, yes. When the Lord's day comes, where art thou? Wherever you are when the Lord's day comes, counts on you, honey. Yes. He put he said, Forsake not to send me of yourselves together, but to meet together. Said, I will be at that house listening for your prayer, looking for a sacrifice, and my heart will be there to be touched for your infirmity. Where are you at when the Lord's day comes? Where are you now, church member? Can folks miss that? Fishing, ball gaming, picnicking, televising, laying on the bed. Where are you now? We're shaking out this soon. We have yourselves together, but rather meet together the first day of the week. Let everybody lay by and store the first day of every week, according as God has promised. The Lord's looking for you to bring that tie. Amen. First day of the week. And the Lord looking for you to bring him to come here because he wants to, he's listening for your prayer and my prayer. Amen. He's waiting to feel my heartache so he can help me. For sake not this image yet. Where are you? Where are I now on the Lord's day? Martha. And didn't so much seeing you naked, hid out, peeping around at God. I don't like the preacher. Well, how you like God? Yes. You don't suppose to come to see the preaching? How you come to worship God? Amen. I don't like the deacon. How you like God? gives you the tree in the woods to hide behind. you got some sin and you subject some fig leaves together, excuses, fig leaves, excuses, and you're running behind in the bushes trying to hide from God behind some tree of some person. I ain't going to excuse you. No. Where are right now? God came to church. He said, I've chosen this house as a house of my house. And we're two or three together together, I'll be in the midst. And my eyes will be looking for sacrifice. My ears will be attending to the prayers. And my heart will be there professionally to feed the infirmities. Brother, sister. God got to have one not place for his people to worship him. That's his church house. Amen. Yeah, to stand up like that. The fraternal orders and the civic clubs and the social clubs and the ball games and all the other county clubs and fraternities, all the other gathering together, eating God's place. God established the church and said, This is where you come to worship me. This is where I'm going to meet you. And if you want to be with me, come on here. Don't put your bunch of leaves and run out and try to escape God and hide in the thickets of the world, he ain't gonna meet you. Right. He's a church looking for you. Where art thou? The first day of the week. Where art thou? Well, so and so. But where art thou? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I don't like so and so, but where art thou? I feel so, so, but where art thou? Yes. Where art thou? I come to walk with you. 
I come to talk to you. I'm in my garden. God built a garden for man to walk with him, talk to him. Hey, hey, God established a church while he's gone. He's going to come down in his church and work and worship with you and talk with you and listen to your prayers and be with you. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you when he comes? Where are you when he comes? Walks the aisles. Walks the altars. Listen. Looks, heartbeats and feels. Who are you? Who are you? Hidden. Are you fig leaves on? And fig leaves, God saw right through it. Right. He didn't excuse that because you had some good fig leaves aprons on. And he is not excusing any of you because you got a little few little fig leaf aprons excuses on. Right. You're as naked as naked can be in this sight. <laughs> All right, I am. I come to work. I come to walk with you, talk with you. Where are you at, Adam? Just face it. Best of everything. Now what do you want to run off somewhere else? Instead of thinking easy, he's got the best robes there. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Don't any spots on. Instead of thinking easy, he offers you pure white robes without blemish and without spot. What do you want to set them for fig leaves for? Not all of that. My friends, instead of running around all over the hills and hollows and the beaches, he's got gold streets for you to run on. Instead of running around lakes and mountains, he's got thrones and he's got rivers running down clear as crystals. And trees are growing by the side of it. You don't even have to work to pay the rent or anything else. Just go down there and eat till you're satisfied. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes. How are you going to improve on that? Amen. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> How can we get walked up that much yeah. that the devil can swap us out and yeah. cheat us like that? Get us to set out the robes without spot and blemish and sell the gold streets for a bunch of mud holes and chuck holes and set old muddy rivers for the rivers pairs of Christian and sell old clothes to eat up with moss for white robes. How in the world can the devil get me twisted up and get you twisted up to where we'll set out like that and swap out? I don't know. He sure has worked us over. Question we need to face. What have we done? 
that we become stunning blocks to those around us by living shoddy Christian lives, by living worldly and treating God and the church cheap and little, having them stunning blocks. He said you'd be better off somebody told tied a millstone about your neck and drowned in the sea. And there'll be a stunning block to one of these little ones. That's what he said. I'll just put you in what he said. Don't sound good, but it's so. And as we're facing it, what has thou done? He said, Where's thy brother? Oh, Cain said, Am I my mother's keeper? What's that? You mean I got to worry about my brother? Jesus said, His blood's crying out against you. His blood's on you. It's crying out against you, eh? Cain. Yeah, man. What did he say? He said in Ezekiel, I wait thee, he said thee in a town of warning, and if he warn not the wicked man of his wicked ways, and he dies in his sins, I will require his blood in thy hand. If you let somebody go to hell and you hadn't warned them, if you let somebody stumble over your careless, worldly, indifferent life and go to hell, the blood of them's on your hands. I don't care who you are. When you stand there, there's bloody hands. Bloody hands! Bloody hands! Somebody went to hell! Cause you didn't live right in front of them. Cause you didn't dream about right it as a Christian. You got bloody hands. You didn't witness to them. You got bloody hands. I've got bloody hands. Another message you heard me preach year two ago, maybe last year, a year before. And I said in the day a word more about facing God that oh that one thing anything else. I remember some men that God leaves on my heart to go talk to about Jesus. And I said I was too busy and as soon as I got this little job done I'd go and before I got there they were dead. One man here in this county, God woke me up saying, go, go. And I got up and someone said, you got to get over here and take care of this little odd thing. Won't go over 15 minutes and you'll be back and you won't have nothing to worry about. You'll have more time to cancer with him. He's lost and sent me to come. He's under conviction. And I run on by his house, but when I got there, the car wheels pulling that way. I just went on, tended a little bit, wasn't gone but 15 minutes, come back down the same road. The highway was crawling out there, flanking traffic. Bunch of men out there on the railroad with the tub picking up something. I said to the officer, I said, What's going on? I said, The man lived in that house right over there, They're picking up his picking up what they can find out. I froze in the car almost. By the time I got down to the crossing, the funeral home men come out with a wash tub full of flesh, bones and flesh, piled in that tub and piled up and got a sheet out of the hearse and threw it over it. And said there's never thing mixed in with it. Said, put you go back to the funeral home with us. I come back to the field home. They went in and poured it out on the marble slab, a pile of ground up bones and flesh, and took a hose, washing the cinders off of it. Said, you go tell the family we can't, they can't view his body too tore up too bad. You go tell the family for us. That's the hardest thing I ever had to do. What I had was harder than that. When I stand the judgment out of God, and his blood goes dripping off these fingers. Fifteen minutes ago, I got across that road and flanked him down from going to hell. I didn't do it. I'm worried about his blood. Yes. Mm. Bloody hands! Bloody hands! Bloody hands! Am I not my brother's keeper? Yes! He felt like I was, but I didn't get to him. You didn't tip a count there. Woman came to me and said, "Our husband, are you the only preacher my husband's ever had in confidence in?" Two sons come and crying, 
put the arms around and looked up. I can see the tears run all the face now. Go talk to my daddy. You can win. You don't want to put you, he listen to. I tried, but not didn't I just tried to get in friendship with him. I didn't press the question. I went and they didn't have a pastor at the church and they asked me to baptize the ones that got saved in the meeting. And I went down in his pasture. A little creek down there, a the white sandy creek and there's a whole water there we can baptize in. There's a log sticking out. I asked him, would he loan me his cross-cut sword so that log out and let me use his creek to baptize the people in the church? He said, I'd be honored to it. I'd feel honored if you'd do it, preacher. I like you. My wife and two sons go down there. They belong down there. Yes, you can use it. I got on that saw him that log. He come along and jumped over in the creek and said, let me have the end of that, that other handle. I'll help you. He's down there in the water and he's helping me saw the log out. So he got in there and got on the bank without tripping over the log. The Spirit of God said, now you got to preach to him. Tell him about Jesus. The devil got over on me and said, don't you take advantage of a man like that. Wait till he gets out on the bank and tell him. Nobody here for you and him. Yeah. Just wait till he gets on the bank. He'll swear as long as he lives you tricked him. He swear as long as he lives, he'll hate you. If you talk to him about that, and then him hold of the saw, he can't get away. Give him a fair chance, let him get on the bank, and then he can run if he wants to. He got to the log into it and stepped up on the bank, and I started, and just that time, the fellow run up in the pickup and said, Jeff, I want you to go with me right quick. I need you right quick. Jump in the truck. He's gone. Baptized, but he wasn't there. Three months later, my phone rang three o'clock in the morning. Said, just so and so's dead. Crestor, his family, you put his funeral. When I got to the home of that family, the wife fell in this arm. Oldest boy fell in this arm. The younger boy buried his face between my shoulder blades, all of them weeping. Said, why'd you tell him about Jesus? He's gone. Preach, why'd you tell him about Jesus? He didn't listen if you'd have told him. All I could see is when I was standing at the judgment, bloody hands. Bloody hands. And my mother and brother's keeper, I was because he respected me. He believed in me. Hey, my friends, God's got you to win somebody. And if you don't want them, you'll have bloody hands in the judgment. His blood cries out against you. Where art thou? Where art thou? What hast thou done? Have you let somebody go to hell? Are you going to have bloody hands when you face the judgment of God? How many? How many? Whose blood be on your hands? How many? How many? How many? Then my friends, where is thy brother? And my brother, brother's keeper. Oh, how many of us goes to stumbling hell? Then I referred to the other the other night. There's the disciples Jesus had taught them and drilled them on carrying on his work of the church. Taught them <coughs> and drilled them and trained them and prayed for them. And spent hours and nights and daytime with them. As soon as he took off. Old Peter said, boys, I'm going back to fishing nets. <laughs> Someone said, well, if you're going, we're going to leave. If you're going fishing, we're going to And they all went fishing. And they fished and fished and fished all night. 
didn't catch that. Wasted a night fishing. Wore themselves out throwing those nets. Fishing. All the time. Jesus watched them. When they got through, <coughs> Jesus walked up out there and said, Children, have you any meat? No. Throw it on the other side there over there and that now. We were never worn out, sir. Throw it over. I said, throw it on the other side. But we were out and never gone nowhere. But nevertheless, it's your command. We'll throw it over. Throw it over there. And a little bit is full of fish and he's about to drag him out of the boat. Old Peter said, that's the Lord, fellas. They drug the thing out and the whole bank is full of fish. Net full of fish. Fish, fish, fish. He said, y'all are awful hard and well. wild. Come on, I got breakfast ready. Praise the Lord. Got him out there. <laughs> said, I'm fed him breakfast. Got through, he said, now, Peter, <coughs> I taught you that business. I taught the rest of the business. Are you going to keep fishing for men or are you going to back the old fishing business? But I called you out. <clears throat> Lovest thou me more than this business? Lord, you know I do. Then let's go feed the sheep. There's a lot of them starving. Lovest my me? Yes. Yes. Then feed the sheep. Now come on, Peter. Get honest. Get, get a deep. Get honest. Lovest thou me more than these? Lord, you know all things. You know I'm telling you the truth. I do, Lord, honest I do. Then feed my little lambs. I got some little lambs. Start now. Don't waste your time down here, fool. What, what you used to fool. Let's go. He said, all right. All right, I'm ready. Uh -huh. Hey, wait a minute, Lord. What about Brother John? You ain't called on him. What about John? He ain't coming. Jesus said, Peter, that ain't none of your business. Right. What's that to thee? If John wants to sit right there and I get back, What's that to you? If you're going to follow me, John or no John, let's go. Amen. And the human side of it, what about old brother so-and-so? What about old sister so-and-so? They're not carrying their part. They're not giving their part. Well, what of it? If you're going to do a thing for God, get up and do it. Whether John or Sue or Martha or she does it or not, if you're going to serve God, sell out. Get in it and go out for God all the way. If you're not, well, just shut up and take out and go over and hide that on a tree and put on your old fig leaves. You'd be ashamed when the end comes. What he's saying, what other folks does, doesn't excuse me. Pardon me. And the pastor can tell the best certain witness and brother. Harley, some of these other Christians. But me and Esther have seen some of our very best, closest preacher friends go to the devil in the last six months. I've never seen nothing like it. Mm -hmm. Folks out of, fellas out of state my life on. Yeah. They just lift it. <laughs> Left the ministry and run off with women and run off and done other things as bad or worse. And out of the ministry, gone to the devil, become rags. But what of it? Yeah. If that's the sparkle and the Earl Father goes, Dad, I ain't going to affect me. I'm going to go on. Yeah. Love the sound me more than these. Yeah, I love the Lord more than I love them or any other preacher, any deacon, or anybody. Still going for Jesus. Amen.
No deacon, no old member, no old woman, no old man, no young and nobody else is gonna stop me criticizing and make fun of and call me names. Throw off on me. I'm not gonna sell out. I've got too good a thing. I'm expecting to go where any first me wrongs. I'll have to have to wash and the moths won't eat. I'm going to golden streets. I'm going to where there's plenty of water to water me, plenty of trees to grow my fruit. I'm going to where I never want for anything else where the devil don't pay, where the devil can't come, oh. where I'll live forever, where there be no death, where there be no goodbye, where there be no tears in my eyes, where there be no heartaches, where there be no suffering, where there be no honky tongues, rolling house, looking tag or something else, where there be nobody to buy me out of head in that way. Why shut up now? Yeah. Where I die. What has I done? Am I not a brother Stephen? Yes. Do everything you can to keep him out of hell. Don't you murder him and send him to hell. Rescue him. And then at the same time, my friend, love us thou me more than these. Yes, you love the Lord. You love this lost world more than you love this world's things. Plus women. Hey, shall we stand?